Greetings, everyone. Um, I am George Stephanopoulos. I'm on the board of the uh, Hellenic Film Society USA. This is uh, a second of a series of conversations on film that's taking place to promote the Greek uh, Film Expo, which has been running from July 10th through July 20. We have today, um, we have today three uh, guest speakers, one of whom I have a pre-existing relationship with, Stephen Bernstein, who I met several years ago at the Savannah Film Festival. And uh, we're very glad that he's able to participate in, um, in our event, uh, only because he is someone who, even though he's, he's the only non-Greek on the panel, but he is as Greek as anyone else. He lives, I believe, most of the year in Greece. He's joining us today. Um, from Ohio, California, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Stephen, as you read in, in the brief description, is a writer, director, producer, and uh, probably best known uh, as for cinematography work and having, having uh, worked on the Oscar uh, uh, classic monster film starring, uh, 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 how do I pronounce her name? Charlize Theron. Char Char Charlize Theron, that's right. Yeah. Charlize Theron. Okay, also uh, with us is, is George Limos. He's a producer uh, based in, in London. He's uh, the owner of, of uh, Marble Man Productions. He is also a credit producer of the um, Greek film America Square, which, which uh, won the cash prize at the Thessaloniki Film Festival in 2016, was also the um, Greek... Uh, selected film for best foreign film in the 2018 Oscars, although it wasn't uh, nominated, but it was selected. So congratulations, George, on, uh, on, on, on that film. It was a powerful film and great, uh, great uh, Greek drama. Um, then Alex Tsoulis, who is in Athens, uh, or he's in Greece, he's based in Athens. Uh, we don't know where in Greece he is at the moment, but he's in Greece. And he is a well-known commercial director. He will show some of his uh, work uh, later in, in the talk. And, um, and uh, I know uh, the, three, the three guest speakers all have co are collaborating currently on other projects and maybe we'll get a chance to hear uh, them speak to that. So let's uh, start off first uh, with each of you saying something about yourselves that uh, is, was outside of what I had to say. Stephen, you go first. Uh, it's very good. So outside of what you said, uh, yeah, I, I've uh, been doing this for uh, making films for um, uh, 43 years. My wife prefers to say I've been doing it for 25 years, so it'll make me seem younger, but um, I prefer to go with the truth of the, uh, the long experience. Um, and as a boy, I used to go to Greece uh, all the time, um, was and remains my favorite place on earth. Never thought I'd have the opportunity to actually live there, but uh, as technology changed, I discovered that I could write scripts um, anywhere in the world and uh, have intended for some while to uh, settle in Greece. Uh, of course, started an initiative to uh, create a uh, tax credit scheme there um, with uh, my jo friend George Hazemarcus, who's the governor of the South Aegean. Um, and we took it to the, uh, the central government. And of course, the bill was passed. And then there's been built on that since. Um, I've run a film school there, uh, training young Greeks to build infrastructure and uh, have helped facilitated the building of studios there. And then our studio being built in Sesaliki, as many people know. So uh, we have studio, we have uh, infrastructure, um, we have a great uh, and aggressive tax plan. Um, I get to live there uh, when I'm allowed to travel. There's a lovely house waiting for me in uh, Sivoza, which I can't get to. Um, uh, in fact, it's Alex's uncle's house. <laughs> I hope to get to it very soon. Um, and uh, I've got a new film coming out with uh, John Malkovich and Risa Fons and uh, Roma Ligari called Last Call. And uh, it's a very special film. And we did the post-production, the last part of post-production, the sound mix in Greece. So all the places I could go in the world um, uh, for a sound mix with a prestigious cast, um, we chose Greece and um, we did it via Alex's company. He's got a facility company that helps connect um, American and British filmmakers with people in Greece. He found us a great sound mixer, and um, we just did a test screening up in Montreal. And the first thing everyone commented on was how rich the sound was. So, you know, there's a there's a myth that uh, Greece is behind um, uh, in the, the, the availability of technology or the ability of crews. Simply not the case. Uh, I chose Greece uh, in preference to all places. Great, Alex. Um, 
what do we need to know about you? Uh, you look you look young. So how how long have you been in this business? <laughs> There's much less to know about me. I'm uh, just uh, six years now a commercials director. I'm a part of a directing duo. Uh, we've been working out of Athens uh, for uh, these six years, and now we're working and well on our way to narrative and our first feature film. And it's uh, we can't wait to to get our hands on a project. And just uh, as of late, we we started a production company, a service production company. That is, uh, as we worked, uh, as Steven said, we've been working on a few things here and there and slowly work is starting to pick up and more people are interested in coming to Greece. And uh, it, it seems positive. Very, and thank you for having me, of course. Uh, Jeff, sure. I have to ask you, are, are you self-taught or did, how did you get started in the business? Um, mo mostly self-taught. I've uh, always been uh, using uh, cameras since I was uh, very, very young. And uh, slowly, I guess that turned into my interest in filmmaking and always making films since I think I was uh, 14 or so. Uh, documentaries, uh, short films, and then slowly I decided to go study uh, directing for film in the US. And uh, six years ago, I came back, uh, joined uh, with a friend of mine, and we've been working together ever since, and things have been going great. That's, that's great. And uh, George, I know, speaking of shorts and documentaries and features, I know you work in all sort of three areas, uh, but uh, you know, tell us about uh, some, something personal about your background. Well, I, um, I wanted to be an actor and I applied and I got into RADA. And uh, very soon after I started uh, my lessons and my coursework there, I was told by uh, my tutor, that the last thing I would ever be would be an actor. And she, str she strongly advised me to uh, have a future behind the camera and not in front of the camera. So um, uh, when, when I got over the disappointment and the shock, I carried on anyway um, under her tutelage. She was called Doreen Cannon. She was absolutely incredible. And uh, I set up an initiative while I was there to pick up uh, first time director's screenplays and if I liked the storyline, I'd, I'd uh, put money in to produce the, the films. And so that's how I started working with short, short films. And I love the business of, uh, of producing through, through those short films. Uh, then I moved into uh, another, I moved into shipping because it was the family business and there was an upturn in, in fortunes. And so I concentrated on shipping, but I always kept a, an eye on what was going on with films, kept up my connections. And then uh, about uh, 10 years ago, I decided to start this independent uh, production company, Marble Men. I uh, worked on a couple of feature films uh, in, in, in America, a feature documentary. Then I worked on America Square and, and another film that the, uh, the same director had, had done beforehand. And uh, now I've become a, a, an advocator of independent films. Um, I've been... Uh, I've learned a, a hell of a lot by uh, my association with Stephen over the last 24 months. Uh, and it's, uh, he's opened my eyes to, to many, many different uh, aspects of, of filmmaking, which I must admit was, I wasn't too aware of. And that's helped me very much and my, with my production company as well. And now we support, um, again, we, we, I have an initiative where I support uh, young first time screenwriters or directors to help them get their first, uh, their first screenplays made um, into films, which I hope will lead them on to bigger and better things. Um, and that's what I'm doing at the moment. I, I'm on working on two feature films, uh, hopefully both set in Greece, and a couple of short films which will be filmed in, in London and in Athens. And that's how I continue today. Well, I, want to I want to pick up on what you just said about hopefully set in Greece. So. So this is a question I'll sort of just open it up to, to all three of you, just so if, you know, you know, if given the choice, all things being equal, do you want, do you, you know, you know, how did, how did you, you know, lock in on going to Greece? Is it, is it come down to financing at that point or, or are there other considerations? No, let me uh, jump. Yeah. 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 I was going to say before George jumps in for me, because I'm the outsider, um, it's not just that I love Greece that I want to shoot there, but uh, you'd be mad to shoot anywhere else, frankly. First of all, uh, the greatest concentration of microclimates in the world, uh, that is uh, from 
mountains covered in snow to um, desert islands to uh, lakes and forests and everything in between. The greatest concentration of microclimates in the world is not California, which is second, it's Greece. So the reason California became a production center besides um, the dysphoria of Jewish producers who were dealing with uh, various prejudices and had to move away from Edison and his monopolies in New York and go out to the deserts of California was when they got out there, they found all these different locations. You could shoot a Western out there. You could shoot something that was meant to be in, in Britain. You could shoot something that seemed European. Um, and the only other place that's like California in that regard is Greece. So number one, the locations you have are incredible. <laughs> the advantage that Greece has that California doesn't is um, its antiquity. I mean, the sites and the wonders of Greece are, of course, legend and fantastic for shooting films. You have to build those in California. I'm not aware of any Parthenon, except maybe a Disney World that's anywhere in uh, California. Whereas Greece, you have it and you have it there, uh, you know, for real. Um, the other thing is this tax credit that uh, I started, but other people ran with, is now one of the most aggressive in Europe. So you're probably going to get 40%, more than likely, uh, maybe 35, going to get a huge tax credit. You've got all these uh, microclimates. And then the third thing is, it's part of the EU. Now, I'm sure everyone on this call knows what the EU is. I'm always amazed in California. When I mention the EU, I get some sort of disease that they can get a, a medication for on late night television. But the EU is the uh, European Economic Union, and it means that anyone in Europe can work in any other European country, which is why it's so mad, in my opinion, that the UK is leaving the EU, but that's another story. Uh, they're still in it as of this moment. I think, George, correct me if I'm wrong, or there, there's some tenuous uh, stages in between. But if you know a great gaffer, DP, uh, production designer, or actor anywhere in Europe, they're allowed to come to uh, Greece and work. No special visas, no special requirements. They get in their car and they drive to Athens and uh, then they're on a boat, if you're on an island or if you're in the mainland, they're working. So now you have all of Europe available to you um, to provide you with creative and technical resources. You have this fantastic climate, you have this, uh, a tax rebate, and there are incredibly gifted people uh, working in Greece. I mean, that's almost uh, is a, a singular uh, director. Um, um, uh, if people saw the candidate uh, um, last year, it was candidate. What was it called? I don't know. The last film, the candidate or the his last movie, the, the Oscar-nominated film from the Greek director Latimos. Oh, the um, the, yeah. the the one about uh, with the. Um, with Coleman, with Olivia Coleman, who won. Yes, uh, was it the candidate? I can't remember. Whatever it is. No, it wasn't. Uh, um, we'll, we'll, it'll come to us. We're all embarrassing ourselves. Um, any case, uh, a talented Greek director and Alex uh, here. And I, look, you know, I met Alex, uh, and I thought, you know, nice kid. Um, in my patronizing, um, arrogant American, forty-year experience in the business self. And then um, I switched on a television in uh, the Electra Hotel in Athens one day, and uh, I saw this incredible, stunning, breathtaking commercial. I said, oh, that must have been made in America or England. Um, I don't know any uh, Greek directors who did it. And then I met Alex and saw his reel, and there it was on his reel. Um, and it's just, uh, look, years ago in the Ridley Scott days and things in England when we're all doing commercials, I used to see spots like that, but haven't very often since. He's incredibly gifted um, in all humility and uh, for him, and uh, it's special to see. There are people like this in Greece, great actors, great technicians. Um, Faden uh, Parvinakl is, uh, of course, a Greek-American, but moved back to Greece some years ago, spends a lot of time there. So you have everything you could possibly need. So very long answer to your short question, but when I look at places to shoot my next film, um, of the six I've got in development, three are in Greece. And as I said, I chose to do my posts in Greece. So it's not a matter of why shoot in Greece. The question is why shoot anywhere else? Okay, so George and Alex, you're both being Greek. I mean, is it just sort of uh, taking for granted that that's where you would take a project or, or not necessarily? Uh, I'll take this uh, first because I'm sure Alex will be able to expand a lot more Absolutely. since he, he does work. Uh, and I'm just a visitor. Uh, by the way, the Lanthimos film was the favorite. Yes. Um, we, all blanked on, we all blanked on thinking of the favorite. Yeah, no, I like to humiliate myself when I can, so the, I, I um, seize the opportunity. For me, uh, the, there, there are a couple of things that uh, 
that make me want to, that, that gravitate me towards Greece for filming there. Um, obviously, uh, the weather, the climate, as Stephen said. Um, it's been said that uh, camera lens can capture more shades of blue in Greece than anywhere else in the world. Um, but uh, I like it because I find all the crews are highly expertise in their, in their, in their fields. Uh, they're all uh, English speaking, which makes uh, communication with any international production company much easier. Uh, the post-production facilities that Stephen referenced are, are excellent and they're equipped with um, high-end industry um, technologies. And um, they're totally dedicated. The crews are totally dedicated there. Uh, they'll go way beyond the call of duty if they believe in the project. They love their art. They're passionate for their art. And, and if you treat them well, and if you have a good understanding with them, they'll go the extra mile for you. And you just get a lot more done. Um, and I think uh, Greece provides a, a dream team of, of uh, dedicated maniacs because they can be quite manic in, in the way they, they, they work. But it's certainly to the benefit of, 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 a, of a director and a producer. And we're very thankful that we have these kinds of crews there. So I wouldn't hesitate to film in, in, in Greece and in Athens and, and even on the islands as well. And, and everything is a very short distance. So you've got a scene maybe on the mainland, then you want to travel to one of the islands to do some kind of another scene. They're short distances, so you're not wasting too much time as well. Um, so I, it's a good point. Um, Alex, you know, obviously if you live and work in, in Greece, you're most likely to do your projects there. But, um, you know, uh, you, you know, Tell me from your vantage point why uh, shooting in Greece is, is advantageous. Um, I mean, I, I think apart from the, the, the beauty, the natural beauty of Greece, uh, something that you'd really have to, to be here to, to see in person, uh, to, to really understand. Uh, but apart from that, I think uh, everything has smoothened out uh, over the past few years. And shooting here, as far as uh, permits and uh, professional crews and, and English-speaking uh, uh, professionals and cast, is something that is much uh, easier to uh, to find than it used to be. I, if you would have asked me six years ago, I might have uh, had second thoughts about shooting in Greece, but from uh, from when I started uh, actually really working here and really understanding how things go. I, I, I'm sure I'd definitely make, make a film here if I had a choice uh, between any, anywhere in the world and Greece, I'd probably pick Greece. So the uh, cash rebates and tax relief aside, what um, did you find that, that it's considerably less expensive to, to shoot a film or TV series or commercial in Greece, just given, you know, uh, associated expenses with, with with doing that, just in the in the talent that's pool that's available to either do your post production there or to find your 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 cast there, um, just in, in turn, and then just the, the logistics of that is it just net net going to be less expensive? Well, yes, it, it will be less expensive because um, uh, when you look at the the whole picture and you go to a post uh, facility. Uh, for sound or whatever, you negotiate the price and you can see straight away that uh, uh, compared to London and Soho prices, uh, there's, there's a marked difference. Uh, but yet there isn't a difference in, uh, in quality uh, because they have up-to-date machinery uh, and they work, uh, you know, seven days a week. Uh, and you don't have to sort of, uh, like here in London, you know, they might stop at sort of 5.30, 6 o'clock on a Friday night. Uh, in Greece, if you ask them, they'll work Saturday, Sunday, and they'll want to get the job done. Um, you know, there's a flexibility in Greece as well. There's, and as I said, if you can connect with them, if you can, if you can get them to follow your, your philosophy of what it is you're trying to achieve, they're so invested in the, in the artistic process that they'll go out of their way for you. So, and, and yes, uh, I don't know if Alex will agree with me, but it is less expensive uh, and certainly more opportunity uh, 
to, to, to film movies. Well, you, and to you look at a movies. series like The Durrells and uh, the production value they extracted from that, and I was stunned by how small their budgets were. So particularly in episodic television, um, when you settle into a location, um, it's, it's incredibly inexpensive. The gear is inexpensive, the crews are inexpensive, but then there's so much support. I mean, the Greek government uh, is actively pursuing um, international films um, and um, they are investing in their manner, not just in their tax incentives, but they're encouraging uh, hotels and facilities and infrastructure to support films. So That's very when interesting. You go, you'll Sorry. get good deals on hotels, on meals, yeah. everything else, yeah. No, Stephen, that's a very interesting point because I know that there is a synergy uh, between uh, uh, tourism and the production uh, companies. Uh, and they've worked together uh, with, the, uh, I think the Hellenic Film Commission is working together with the, with the tourist board. And they're trying and to find- very, And they have absolutely, and I was dealing with the tourist board a lot because we know, everyone knows that when you bring a film to a country, you bring tourism follows and they understand the economic model of how that works, which is why there's so many tax credits across America that are available in different states. Um, but the thing that I always find people very cynical about in America, and look, I am originally American, so um, I'm not to, uh, uh, underestimating uh, Americans' intelligence in this regard, but people are always very suspicious of production values in, uh, in Greece and in other places for that matter. I assure I've uh, worked in 37 different countries. Uh, I've done features in, uh, in India and in Thailand and Africa and, uh, of course, the UK, Ireland, and so on. Uh, the crews and the equipment facilities in Greece, um, if you get uh, one of the top crews, and I have to admit that after uh, it gets busy in Greece, it gets thin on the, the, the ground, so you've got to get in early until we build a full infrastructure there, but we're in the process are world-class. They're really very good crews. And I hope later you have a chance to show some of Alex's work because you've got to realize he probably is not allowed to reveal the budgets on these commercials, but he did these commercials with no money. I mean, by American standards, I mean no money. I think craft services uh, would have bigger budgets on an American commercial than Alex had to make these ads with. And yet he produced incredible production values because of the availability of quality uh, technicians, because of the availability of qual quality cast, and because of his own, I, frankly, and I, I'm, I'm not uh, hyperbic by nature, uh, because of his genius. I mean, he's very, very special, and he's Greek. Um, and one last thing, and I'm not trying to plug anything because I get nothing from any of this. Alex brilliantly set up a, a facilities company that uh, acts as liaison with people coming from abroad. So when I was looking for a post company, I reached out to him. So this is what I've got. I, um, you know, let's see if you're competitive. Let me see these resumes. I think it was within two or three days, he and his um, a partner, Veta, uh, had sent me a list of people, had found me a sound mixing facility, a really good sound mixing facility, a sound mixer, and they beat the quote of um, Poland, the UK, the US, France, Spain, um, where else was I looking at, um, uh, Germany, uh, and there was the best quote, I got outstanding sound, uh, surround sound, Dolby, the whole business, uh, and then a separate television mix for uh, probably a fifth of the cost I would have paid at Twickenham. And I love Twickenham, but to my mind, just as good. Right. So, you know, so it, you, know, you mentioned how tourism follows um, film shot on location, whether it's in Greece or elsewhere. I mean, that, that's a reality it happens. I've always called that the sideways effect, right? Because you have, you know, the movie Sideways, you know, the, what that did to the, you know, the tourism in, in Southern California and the wine country, you know, it, 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 you can measure it. And it's, it's, you know, millions of dollars in media spend that, uh, and, and real um, tourism that to the area that, uh, you know, benefits the local economy. That happens. Um, Field of Dreams is another good example. I mean, that baseball diamond was a, came a museum and millions of people every year would, would visit that location. So I think more movies get made and it, it depends on the movie. Like you take America, America Square shot in downtown Athens. I'm going to want to ask you about that, George, in a, in a minute, but you know, uh, you know, that, that, that's not necessarily a movie that makes you say, I want to go <laughs> visit Athens, Greece. But, um, but um, you know, the movie I, I worked on in, in Rhodes, Greece, you know, it's a 90 minute commercial for Greece. So it's a very different film. And, uh, and, and so all these movies will have different, uh, Shirley Valentine, you know, definitely brought people to Mykonos and uh, the same with um, Zorba the Greek and, and other films like that. But, uh, and, the, and the Big Blue. 
The big blue. The big blue. Yeah. Took Somewhere everyone to uh, Alonisos, which was uh, an unheard of uh, island uh, until the big blue was shot there. And Lara Croft, I think, in Santorini. Um, and after and midnight. And even the I, documentary about Leonard Cohen talking about Idra, you know, people want to go there because it's an incredible place. Yeah. So, yeah. And the Magus was there. Uh, Shirley Valentine still has a big impact of women of a particular age. My wife, uh, uh, first thing we did when we went to Greece last time was drag me off to the bar on Mykonos where Shirley Valentine uh, <laughs> uh, happened. So it was, it was a little bit disconcerting because she leaves her husband to have an affair with a Greek, but I, I tolerated it. I think so. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's quite special. That's where art imitates life, I suppose. Huh? I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, the other, and the other thing is, I think, the, and what Stephen did in conjunction with uh, his... Uh, colleagues uh, in, in government or who were, were in sort of power and to sort of uh, renegotiate and, and, and rise uh, like a phoenix from the flames, the, 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 in, the tax uh, incentive for Greece. Uh, people were, were, you know, the, the Greeks have got so annoyed that um, uh, the, one of the Bourne identity films, uh, which was supposed to be set in Athens, was actually filmed in the Docklands in, in London. And then they got even more annoyed when they heard that the Mamma Mia 2 was being filmed in Croatia and they hadn't gone back to Skopelos uh, because uh, there was so much bureaucracy and red tape. And I think it fell perfectly. The timing was perfect for Stephen to, to come up with his, um, his formula. Uh, and that's why it was uh, so readily accepted. I mean, people wanted to, uh, we wanted to reinvent Greece as, as, as a very friendly place uh, cosmopolitan European place to, to film. Uh, so, you know, kudos to Stephen because well, really uh, in the last three we, years, there have been over 30, 30 foreign productions in the last three years. I mean, we uh, had a conversation it. yesterday with uh, representatives from the Greek Film Center and the commission and, and the new uh, governing body, Ekume. And we talked about how it was not just a new law that was passed, it's really a change in philosophy. Yes. Like it, it's saying that that film, the film industry can drive the economy of Greece in a, in a substantial right. way. And they've made Look, we, an investment we, in that. We three uh, right here are combined, we can't reveal the, the project, but uh, if it happens and we're moving in the right direction, uh, we hope by next year to be shooting what will become the biggest uh, TV series ever shot in Greece. Okay, so, so I was gonna ask about that, Stephen, because I have a question from Peter Nikos. I'm, I think you know him from Los Angeles, he's a good friend of mine, and he wanted someone in, to touch on, you know, shooting television in Greece and not just film, which, you know, and I, you know, I don't know if it's, what's, you know, it, it's reminiscent of what's happening in the United States with, with, with Netflix and everyone wanting to now do miniseries or docuseries or, or long form television um, and moving away from features or not working exclusively in, in feature film. Um, yeah, well, uh, I, there's a necessity because the theaters aren't open. So, uh, but look, I love television anyway. Uh, Game of Thrones really uh, changed the, the landscape because the zeitgeist used to be altered by movies. I mean, Jaws came along, Godfather, it was an event that there was this cultural alteration. Um, people talked about it uh, and that was the focus. There was always television in the background, but there were rarely television events. Uh, maybe Roots was one example but nothing that would alter the culture dramatically the way television and streaming services now work. So then along comes Game of Thrones, and of course it uh, changed, changed the world culture in many respects. I don't think politically the landscape has changed, but everyone was watching it. It became um, a shared bit of iconography that people could reference. Um, everywhere around the world people had seen it, and people have been trying to replicate the success of the series. Uh, it's not a million miles from what we're doing. Ours is in science fiction, but it's, uh, it's still an enormous series. And um, we were looking for a place that offered us a lot of different locations because the events that we're portraying happen um, over a period of time at a lot of different locations. And Greece was ideally um, suited for that. Uh, secondly, we knew that uh, if we're going to ask actors uh, to uh, sustain a performance and uh, their own mental health for a long period of time, uh, look, I was born in Buffalo in upstate New York, which is a kind of a grim industrial town. I'm loyal to it, but when you talk about attracting tourism, you do any number of films about Buffalo, you're not going to get people coming to Buffalo to look at the close factories and the snow that's sort of brownish yellow from the pollution that's falling on top of it. 
for those loyal Buffaloists, um, I assure you that I love the place, but that's not what attracts uh, tourists. Greece is very beautiful. So when you say to an actor, yeah, we're going to need you for seven months, either shooting or on hold, but you're going to be in Greece. You're going to be in Santorini or in Mykonos or in Cyrus or uh, Sivota or uh, Helki Island or wherever it is. And the actor goes, really? And you're going to pay me for this as well? That's the other great attraction for Greece is you can say to international cast, hey, you want to come work in paradise? Mm. Yeah, okay. Do you want to come work in Buffalo? Not so much. So uh, that's been a huge advantage to us. And as we've been touting our project to uh, various streaming services, they're also very excited because uh, these streaming services are looking for international partners. The American and British markets are saturated with domestic product. Uh, now they're looking for partnerships with other uh, international uh, locations and production companies. So a partnership between uh, Greece and the streaming service we're uh, in conversation with is a natural and organic one. Um, and we'll do it both in the English and the Greek language, mainly English. By the way, this has been a challenge for Greece generally. And I had lots of uh, um, passionate uh, discussions with my Greek friends about doing Greek films in English because they were worried about um, the uh, cultural co-opting. And that, uh, as one said to me, they don't want it to be uh, Greece Disneyland. Uh, they want Greece to maintain its cultural identity. And I fully respect and understand that. But the economic uh, market being what it is, uh, if we want to do Game of Thrones, uh, if we do it in Greek, uh, we're going to have a harder time distributing it than if we did it in English. So we'll probably have a mixture of languages. But it's also interesting. To point out that, that Berlin Babylon, uh, Babylon Berlin worked very well, and that was in German, and it was a success on streaming service. I was going to say, I, I, I'm, it's always surprised me that uh, more Greek filmmakers don't shoot Greek, their Greek films in the English language because it would certainly, um, uh, you know, uh, help on the sell side of things, right? Because it's you know, it's true of any foreign film, uh, whether it's an Italian film or or Spanish film. I mean, these these foreign films, you know, the, the audience is only so. Is so um, accessible to them, right? And if it's in the English language, then I think there's a, there are more territories that, that might, might buy that. It's unfortunate to say that, but I do think there's some, some truth to that. Um, so maybe, uh, Alex, this might be a good time just to show one of your clips. Is that, uh, we're gonna try to sh sh share my screen. I think uh, our attendees might, uh, will find this interesting. Είναι ο θρύλος της γειτονιάς και ο θρύλος ο δικός σου. 
very, very gifted individual and one of many that you'll find uh, in Greece. Alex, so tell us about that, what we just saw. And, and uh, your, 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 your company is Danny and Loco and people can go to your website and see more of your work. I mean, that's just one of many, many, many uh, spots that, that you have up there and they're, they're uh, all just as great. I, what I loved most about that besides Yanni's <laughs> is the editing really was so uh, well done. And I don't know if you, you are involved on editing any of this or you work with outside editors, but uh, tell us about that spot. Uh, absolutely. I'm, uh, I'm having a little bit of uh, trouble uh, hearing you. I just did want to jump back one second to uh, something about uh, films being done in Greek here in Greece. Um, a lot of filmmakers here in Greece uh, do uh, films, do their films in, or choose to do their films in Greek because the Greek language is so rich. And uh, they, they, I think they put art before, uh, I, I guess, what, what could uh, be the distribution of the film, which is something uh, that I really respect. Uh, however, uh, on the other hand, there isn't a Greek that doesn't speak English fluently, which is another great thing uh, here in Greece as far as uh, productions and productions coming from abroad that could have... Uh, questions as far as uh, how do I communicate with people around me, cast and crew and so on. So every Greek uh, does mandatory English in, or I mean every Greek, every Greek school has uh, mandatory English. And so I really, in, in my own experience, have never met a Greek that uh, doesn't speak uh, English fluently. I mean, it's very much a bilingual country, right? Yeah, all, the, all the road signs are Greek and English. And Absolutely. So it's, um, it's changed a lot. I think that had a lot to do with the Athens Olympics in 2004. But the, and, uh, and, and not always the case in America. I was shooting a film in uh, North Florida, South Georgia, where someone was speaking to me for 20 minutes. And I was wondering what language it was. And later, <laughs> someone told me it was English. So uh, it was, uh, <laughs> I understand Greeks better than I do from people in South Georgia. No disrespect to my dear friends in Georgia. Or the fantastic I, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly with what Alex has said. And I'd further it by saying that whereas a few years ago, maybe a, a foreign, uh, foreign language film may have a limited uh, release, a limited distribution, in the last few years, as I mentioned recently somewhere, um, the, the emergence of the power of independent films, the fact that the, the Academy changed the category and it's now called international film and they've removed the foreign language aspect from it. And of course, the culmination in the last few years of independent films getting more nominations and uh, this year, Parasite winning, which was not only an independent film, but an international foreign language film. Uh, this uh, has given us the, the green light to carry on with our, with our artistic, um, independent films, uh, which are creative, which are a lot more realistic uh, and less escapist than the studio films that have a strong message that we, we'd like to, to share with the world, with a wider audience. So I would, uh, I can see the pros and cons, but I think that today, um, my next feature film in Greece will be in the Greek language because I believe that it will find an audience um, internationally. Uh, unless, of course, it's got a Hollywood star in it. And in, unless, which case, unless in which case, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll make sure that his, his uh, section will be in the English language. Like I think yeah. they did with a particular film, I can't remember, forgive me, to the director and to the producer, but... Um, the uh, the actor who was in uh, who was uh, in the, um, the the film about the drama, uh, someone remind me please. The film, J.K. Rowling. J.K. Rowling. Thank you very much. Yeah. J.K. Oh. Simmons. J.K. Simmons. Sorry. Um, he was in a Greek film uh, a few years ago, 
Yeah, and good his, one. Yeah. His, his section was uh, was done in the English language. Right. Yeah. Well, our, our series is going to be done in English and Greek actually... together, but I, it's it's a mixture of things. You gotta you gotta look at your market, uh, what your budget is, and you gotta make a decision. But uh, what else, what uh, George is saying is true. But um, frankly, uh, if you want to if spending big money, you're going to have to reach a big international audience. So it's horses for courses, and sometimes it'll be good to do it in Greek, and sometimes it'll be good to do it in English, and sometimes like in our TV series, it'll be done in both. The, the, the biggest, the most expensive TV series done in recent times, Alex, correct me if I'm wrong, it was, uh, it was a film, it was a TV series called The Island. And it was right. based on a book by Victoria Hislop. Uh, mm -hmm. And it was about the island of Spinalonga in Crete, where all the leper, where, where, which was in fact a leper colony. This was, this was done as a, as a TV series in the Greek language. It sold very well around the world, but I can only imagine how much better it would have been received if it had been in the English language. So yeah. that, that's definitely a, a, a marker. Absolutely. Yeah. So Alex, going back to you, just the, the, that, that, that uh, video that we saw, the, that, was for, that was for a beverage brand? Is that what that was? was it was, yes. Uh, it was a beverage brand. Uh, we are, Danny and Loco is uh, the directing duo that we've been working together, my good friend and uh, I, John. Uh, John and I, sorry, have been working together for the past six years uh, doing commercials and it's been going really well. Um, I, I think more uh, than talking about the actual commercial, it's just the, the ease we had as far as uh, giving it a, a more international uh, feel. It's not that you come to shoot in Greece and uh, you, it looks like a different city. It's really, there are... Uh, many places throughout the city that you can really recreate something that looks like Europe or the US or anywhere in the world really. Uh, and, and we've already talked about the natural beauty, but even in the cities of Greece, there's a lot, uh, a lot that you can uh, do with the locations. Does that commercial get repurposed in any way with a with the, with the different narrator and, and for a different brand or was it just specific to the Greek market? It, it was specific to the Greek market. Uh, yeah, shooting, no, I, shooting outside, or I, I understand, I could be wrong about this, you, that you don't need film permits. And that's, I mean, if you're at an archaeological site, I think that's obviously that's where the requirements to get film, film permits for that. But otherwise, is it true? Is it really open and accessible? It, it's extremely accessible, but you do not, you do not film without a permit uh, unless you're doing something uh, less professional, I guess you could say. Uh, no, no one's going to stop you in the street and ask you, you know, why, why do you have a camera if out? You take, if you take over a public park and go shoot people playing pickup basketball, you're going to need a permit for that? You are better off with a permit. You usually. See, I don't know why I thought Greece uh, was sort of bragging well, about it. was formally that way, but they, they, they now have uh, accepted the international professional practices. Uh, you know, we, we don't want to sh show Greek as a low budget alternative where people aren't doing safe and professional practices. Um, if you're used to shooting in America, it's going to be very similar shooting in Greece, um, and particularly in terms of, of safety. You know, we've had terrible tragedies in the U.S., at least that, that accident in Georgia where a non-professional uh, crew uh, you took over a railway track without permission from the railway, and that young girl was, was killed. Um, and a lot of people think it's going to be like the Wild West in Greece. You go there and no permits and uh, you know, no minimum uh, you know, wage and uh, uh, no protections for crew. It's not that way. I mean, uh, Greeks value life uh, just like anyone else does. And uh, uh, it's safe, it's professional, and you'll need permits. But uh, what they've done successfully, and I, I hope that I've encouraged them in some regard um, in, this, in this way, uh, is the, the system now is streamlined and very, very efficient. One of the things that we had lots of discussions with with the government was what was the interest of international producers in how Greeks ran their film. And one was streamlining paperwork. So for international productions, Alex would know better about domestic work, but for international work, you go there, uh, there's a single office that you can go to, um, you can get your permits, uh, you can get your site photographs. Uh, again, Alex's company has the ability to connect you with location managers. Um, and then um, you'll be ready to shoot. It's not gonna be like it formerly was with no disrespect to Greece, where you might wait a year to get a permit to shoot somewhere, or you might never get a permit. Now, when you apply, uh, you get a professional answer and you get a permit back in really no time. 
To be very honest and, and pellucid about this, there's still a bit of a struggle about historic sites, quite rightfully, because uh, the Greeks value their ancient sites and they don't want them ruined. Uh, but we had some controversy a few years ago with the BBC wanting to shoot on an ancient sites and the former government uh, refused them permission. Um, and I, I appeared in others on uh, various television interviews where we made our feelings um, evident and uh, were happy to say they reversed the decision. The BBC was allowed to shoot. Just generally yeah. now is shoot there. It's just, if you're a responsible producer director and you're sensitive to uh, these sites and uh, to um, sustainability, and this is part of our sustainability is protection of the site, then you'll have no problem. And since then, Stephen, they've really simplified the, the procedures uh, and the film commissions here. I think uh, even for the historic sites, it takes them uh, maximum 15 days to uh, get your permit for uh, uh, filming on a, on a location that has a ancient, uh, that's an ancient site. Much and, uh, it really as far is. The locations, it's, it's sorry. As far as any other location without ancient sites, it's a day-to-day -day thing. I mean, it's you uh, apply for a permit and you have it the next morning. Right. So if you're, you know, an outside producer coming to Greece, you're you're likely going to partner in some way with the with the Greek production company, uh, whether on a for hire basis or 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 to come in, you know, or or on a co production basis. I mean, and they're gonna they're gonna know exactly how to do that and, and get it done efficiently. And so, um, I was just just curious whether or not that was um, what I had read was was it still the way it is or or whether it was wrong information. But I want to go to George for a second. Can we have about maybe ten minutes left or so? I just want to talk quickly about America Square and what what shooting in downtown Athens. Uh, was like and um, and because um, I think most I mean you know it's not all set in downtown Athens but a lot of a lot of film is and it's and it's quite dramatic so I was just curious uh, about that movie in particular. Well, we we filmed um, we filmed all around Athens. We didn't do anything in a studio. Everything was uh, on site. Uh, we chose America Square because. Uh, there were other squares as well we could have uh, filmed at, but uh, America Square had this romantic feel. It was a, uh, a Via Veneto of Athens, in, in the, it had an illustri illustrious past uh, uh, for filmmakers, artists, and celebrities, um, and, uh, and it had a, a certain unique romantic feel to it. When we got there, we uh, walked around and we spoke to the migrants and the refugees who were there. We spoke to a few locals. We developed a good relationship with them. We asked them if they'd like to appear in the background uh, as, as extras. Uh, they were all very excited. They were very humble, so absolutely uh, correct in their behavior. Um, they listened to instruction. Uh, they were given, obviously, uh, we, we fed them and we looked after them. Um, and even more so when we filmed uh, at the old Athens airport, uh, where, which was a holding, a holding area for, for migrants and refugees. The, the whole of the interior of the old airport had become one giant dormitory. Now that's where we spent quite a bit of time because uh, we delayed a bit of filming there. I have to say we took uh, about two or three days longer than we had expected because we were just so overwhelmed with the stories we were hearing. Um, from these people and uh, we chose uh, several who had uh, entertained us and saddened us with their stories and when we did uh, shoot uh, those scenes we made sure that uh, the camera panned across those people because we, we remember their stories in that manner and we refer to them indirectly through the through the script as well. What, what, it, year, it, what year was that shot? Uh, in, in, it was in 16. 16. So how do you, I mean, has the film had any sort of um, impact on, on how yeah, totally. the, uh, the, 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 the refugee crisis in Greece? Well, the film allowed a, a discussion to take place in Greece as to how um, a Greek felt uh, in welcoming and, and, and dealing with this, this tremendous influx, uh, especially as, as the Greeks were going through their own horrific period of austerity at the time. And yet you still found the benevolence in, in the Greeks uh, to welcome them, to look after them. You know, the, the, uh, the Greeks, uh, you know, they have this uh, inbuilt uh, uh, 
welcoming facility for all strangers. And uh, it's difficult to, 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 get, to take that out of your DNA. Um, and certainly we, uh, we attracted attention and, and discussion because it was shown at various human rights festivals. And it was shown at the United Nations as well, at their Global Migration Conference, it was the opening film. So it did, uh, it did attract a, a good discussion and it, it made the Greeks look at themselves and, and, uh, and to examine, in fact, if they did have some kind of inherent racism in them or whether they were just feeling sorry for themselves uh, because of their own uh, crisis that they were going through. Right. Yeah. So we have, yeah, we have a film in this year's festival uh, from Greek director Basil um, Doganis called Miltem, which also is a, a deals with sort of the, the refugee situation in Greece. It's a, a very good film. So hopefully people will have a chance to see that movie as well. And hopefully we can maybe in the future bring America Square to, uh, to uh, the Hellenic Film Society's monthly screenings at MoMI would be great. So, uh, you know, we're sort of for the last five minutes, I just sort of maybe open it up to any sort of final comments that each of you might have just, you know, maybe just, I think we've touched on it, but I'd be curious, like what, again, what's, what, what do you consider sort of the, the one thing, the most important thing people need to know to, uh, to do or think about in, in shooting in Greece? And maybe Stephen, in answering that, I'd love for you to also just talk as a technician, you know, about, about uh, you know, um, about, uh, you know, shooting in Greece and, and the, the, the difference in the lighting. I know you've touched on it, but just um, what's the well, thing? Yeah. Well, first, look, um, as I was a cinematographer, as a writer, certainly, but um, it, it is, for those of you who haven't been, and I presume if you're attending this festival, you either have been or want to go, it is, of all the places I've been on earth, and I've been, I think, everywhere, um, it is among the most beautiful, if not the most beautiful, first of all. So there is, uh, and I often talk about film language, it certainly part of it is written language, but part of it also is um, the visceral language of the composition and what's in the frame. And whenever you create a frame in Greece, right away, there's a visceral impact because it's so stunningly uh, beautiful. In the technical side, you want long shooting days, which means you want sustained light and you want a quality of light and you get sustained light in Greece. and uh, even on hard top light, which is the middle of the afternoon, it's softer than light to many other places. And you've got this, these expanses of the Aegean and Ionian Sea, so you get a lot of bounce light coming off the water, which creates magical effects. So much of the architecture is, depending on which part of the country you're in, is white and blue. That combination with the azure water, the bounce light, and the soft overhead creates a magical visual quality virtually unequaled anywhere else in the world. Uh, on top of that, you know, just practically as a producer, you've got your, you've got your tax credits, uh, you've got great crews, you've got draw on the entire uh, European Union. So uh, you can't realize how important that is because it means that you've got a limitless uh, crew base and cast base. Um, and you've got a beautiful place to shoot, you've got a great tax credit. Um, you've got, uh, as everyone has pointed out, a very aggressive desire among the Greek people and government to please international producers. So within uh, all those reasonable margins of safety, uh, you're going to get a lot of support locally as well. So again, the question is not, uh, you know, why shoot in Greece? The question is why shoot anywhere else? I can't think of any location that competes with Greece um, as the best place uh, to shoot. If you, by the way, if you want to shoot winter in Greece, uh, you go up the coast above Sicily and you get some of those beautiful mountains in all of Europe that people don't know about. You have no idea how stunningly beautiful and alpine they are. There's so many different types of locations and it's all compacted. So you could drive three hours anywhere in the mainland and find virtually every microclimate or go south to Rhodes and see something entirely uh, different. It's, it's spectacular. So it's not just that I love the place, I love shooting. So in terms of location scouting, is that you as a director wanting to see all these different places or, or sort of being told where to go? So what's that process like when you're actually going to shoot in Greece how many, how many locations do you really want to look at or consider? Uh, well, you know, it, it's, 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 we've all learned from the pandemic, the advantages of now using the internet. And things. So, uh, Alec is one of the people that has a service available where you provide the broad strokes of what you're looking for. They could say, well, look, here's 25 locations around Greece that might work for you. 
in America, of course, you know, if it, well, good locations in New York and the ones in Los Angeles, you got a very long trip to connect the two. In Greece, um, it's a very, very short trip and there's flights and boats everywhere. So you could shoot in Sesaliki one day, you could shoot in, uh, in uh, Corfu the next, you can shoot in uh, Santorini the day after that without any real difficulty. So that's one of the miracles of the place. So you look at the photographs first, see them online, arrive in Greece, uh, one of the liaison services and I, I'm not touting Alex, I'm not in partnership with him, but use his company and they can uh, get your permits, get you the photos locations, take you to locations, which can be a two day location scout, you can see the whole country virtually, um, even though there's thousands of islands, get all the locations you want, shoot there inexpensively with an A-list crew, easy. Yeah, so, so we're putting together a database of uh, locations uh, here in Greece. Um, we should have something ready uh, sometime next month. Uh, any questions you might have regarding that, uh, you can uh, email us at info, uh, info at Picky Productions. That's P-I-C-K-Y productions.com. Uh, with with, uh, with that, or just let us know if you're looking for any specific location, and we would be happy to help. George, you'll post all the details about all of us so people can access them on on your site somewhere afterwards. Yes, so okay. we'll definitely um, you know do that. That's a good idea, and I'm glad Alex you mentioned it because it's I know there are people on this uh, in this listening in and who shot in, and worked in Greece who wanted to go back to Greece or go back or to do a move in Greece for the first time. So. Uh, you know, uh, obviously the credits is is a good incentive for a lot of people who want to want to bring the projects to Greece. I only wish it existed five years ago <laughs> when I made my movie. But in any event, I want to thank everyone. Uh, we're we're right at uh, the hour. Um, George, thank you for uh, being part of this conversation. I know it was uh, you were asked for the last minute, but it was just really great to have you here. You had a lot of uh, great things to share with us and Stephen. Well, my pleasure. You. I hang on every every word that you have to say. Big fan. Um, I, you know, people need to see your movie. I know it was uh, Last Call was it, the name changed from Dominion to Last Call, but it's a brilliant film Damn. and stirring and and uh, great performances. And uh, I hope it's still in black and white. <laughs> Just but it's when still, we, still in black and white and with a sound mix done in Greece. So it's everything you could want. Blow people away, and there is an Oscar-winning performance of at least maybe three actors in that film. And Alex, um, yeah, you know, I, I watch commercials like feature films, so uh, I'm as drawn to a three minute commercial that as I am to an hour out feature, but obviously it, it seems like you're gonna be doing a lot of uh, long form production work and uh, hopefully you'll be collaborating more with, uh, you know, George and Steven and, and uh, I look forward to meeting you hopefully in Greece and, uh, and maybe getting to work with you myself. So. Uh, thank you all. Congratulations on, on all of uh, what you're doing. And thank you for being part of today's uh, talk. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Be well. Thank you. Bye-bye.